Good morning, true crime friends. We are back together again. Look, today is, uh, yesterday y'all told me I messed up the date. Today is, what's today? Wednesday, December the 6th, 2023. Yesterday I said it was the 4th when it was actually the 5th. Yeah. If you are coming here to check the date, you're doing probably many things in your life wrong. We are fact adjacent over here. We like dates, time. Don't come here for news, weather, or sports, because I don't know nothing about none of them things. What I do know is the gossip. I got the key key. I got the tea. That is the end of my knowledge as it relates here. So if you want to know the date, please consult the calendar. Not over here. But many, many thanks to all the very kind souls who corrected me. It was like, how are you wrong? Mm -mm. Have you, do you even know what day it is? No, no, I do not. And it kind of doesn't matter. As long as I go to all the meetings I'm supposed to go to and make all the phone calls I'm supposed to make, isn't that enough? Aren't I doing enough? Okay, so look, the latest, latest. You remember back in September, the obsessed fest mess? Hang on. The Obsessed Network is like a big true crime network, right? And uh, Steve Hines, no, Patrick Hines and Steve Tipton run the network. Remember when I made this chart? There's like, I made like a whole chart to explain the whole situation and break it down. I, I have an entire playlist called The Obsessed Mess. And it's an entire playlist. I think it's three videos or four videos or something. But if you want to know and understand all the parts and pieces of this story, please consult that playlist. I'm also going to put this video on that playlist because it's, it's a whole lot. Anyway. Three months later, the owners of the Obsessed Network have finally come out with their answer. Okay, first of all, boo-boos, um, that thing was in September. It's now December. Why did it take you uh, three months to come up with a response to what was like a very explosive situation? Y'all not good business owners. I'm just saying my personal opinion. But apparently, people have really just like gotten up in their feelings and they have started getting... um like unalive threats or whatever addressed to their house personally where everybody knows where y'all live i know where y'all live in fact a friend of mine sent me pictures of the inside of your apartment so you might want to tighten up your security situation because i thought it was common knowledge where you live a lot of people were talking about it also you apparently bought that property in your very own names and not in trust or in an llc so a public record so i'm not encourage anybody to dox these people because that is evil and that is wrong but it was interesting to me that um i had seen all, all kinds of stuff about their home and their apartment and when they show all kinds of pictures of the inside you see me with a curtain closed back there right i'm like mm -mm, y'all don't need to know that much about my personal life although i share a lot with y'all so anyway patrick and steve are like oh um it's been three months and people have been saying terrible things about us and we're losing a lot of money and we're taking a big hit on patreon so we're gonna come out with our side of the story and they came out with their side of the story and i for one appreciate that they finally stood up and said something now did they tell half truths gaslight and lie mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah 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 all the information they gave was fact adjacent in one point in particular they were like this one girl who says she saw and experienced things she has never even been in our office it was the pandemic and she has never been here sir sir the woman that you said worked remotely was living with one of your hosts and was in many, many Zoom rooms and calls or whatever. None of us were in the office during the pandemic. Well, most of us were not. All of us were in Zoom. So you can still hear something and see something and not physically be in a plan. I just, do they know how technology works? I don't. Unclear. So um, they have revealed themselves to continue to be garbage. They did say like, oh, we did a couple things wrong. And here's some places where we have for growth. That's like if I walk up to you and I'm like, you an evil heifer, smack. And then later I say, that person, she and I had a disagreement and I used some words that maybe I should not have. And I'm trying to grow from them. Does that make you unsmacked? Because I think, I think that still qualifies as I smacked you and I was trash for walking up and smacking you. Now, if you did something to my kids and my dogs, well, then I, I can't account for my actions because, you know, that's just going to be what it's going to be. And they were like, someone used our child's name specifically. Hmm? You use your child's name specifically all the time, all the time. 
Y'all don't see me using my kids' names specifically, and they all grown. Oh, mm -mm. Anyway, so um, Steve Tipton and Patrick Hines continue to reveal themselves to be garbage. Carrying on, Lindsay Shiver down there in the Bahamas. Remember this lady who was like a rich lady with her rich husband, and they're from like one of them Roll Tide locations, you know, down there in the South. That Roll Tide apparently is a sports ball thing. You know, I don't know about no sports ball, but anyway. So they have a house in the Bahamas and they have a house someplace in the South. And um, they were like, we were just going to get on the private plane and go to the house in the Bahamas. And now we're having a fight. And so I told, the, Lindsay told her Bahamian boyfriend to unalive her husband. And it's all on text message, ma'am. Mm-mm. Bad for you don't know nothing about WhatsApp. Maybe they were using WhatsApp anyway. So the hitman that got hired for the unaliving um, also was dealing in other criminal things, and so he was suspected in the robbery of a bar. Hey, I don't talk my throat dry. Hang on, hang on. So the hitman is a suspect in the robbery of a bar. When the police were doing all the research for the robbery, they were like, what is this text that says unalive him? Let, let's do some more research. So they started doing research and they were like, oh, this heifer, she planned to unalive her husband? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they arrested her behind. So now she's sitting down there in prison. It was, no, she was locked up in jail. And all of her personal business came out, the fights with her husband, the police body cam footage, child, I was perched watching every single thing. And so um, finally, her husband was like, yes, she can get out of jail. I will consent to that, even though I am the um, alleged victim in this case, but she can't come back home. They were fighting over custody of the kids and who's going to get the house and all this other stuff. Well, now the husband has full custody of the kids up in that Southern state and this wife is stuck down there in the Bahamas. Okay, good for her. I, maybe she has a very nice tan by now. But even paradise can get old if you stuck there and can't leave. She has an ankle monitor and everything. Well, now, finally, the Bahamas, the country of the Bahamas, the state of the Bahamas, I don't know. The case is the Bahamas versus Lindsay Shiver. And she's like, it was a joke when I threatened his life and hired that hitman. You know how you hire an accidental hitman sometimes? I hate it when that happens, especially if your hitman gets caught for other crimes and points the finger at you. That is very unfortunate. So Court TV is going down there to the Bahamas to cover the case. And I'm like, oh, can I be a correspondent? I certainly don't want to be trapped in the Bahamas. I adore the Caribbean, but I would not want to live there. But visiting, but particularly in the wintertime, yes, please. I will take all of that action. So um, she is being accused of murder by text, accused murder by text. Th so the real question is, can she prove it was just a joke? I was kidding when I hired that guy with the gun and the criminal record to unalive my husband and gave him pictures of my husband and his exact location. We were kidding around like you do. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Now look, this text MacGyver down there in... Texas, Georgia, some other Southern state. They have Southern accents. Somebody told me yesterday where it was. Georgia? I don't know. I want to say it was Texas, but I think maybe it was Georgia. Unclear. Anyway, Tex MacGyver is in jail for unaliving his wife. This is the dude, y'all saw this on Dateline, right? He's sitting in the back seat of the car and he has a gun in his lap because he's drunk and he's sleepy and they're in a bad neighborhood. And he startles awake and shoots his wife through the back of the seat. Oops. Was this an oopsie murder or did he um did he intend to unalive her? Now me personally, you you know I'm not on the jury, but since I have watched the episode of Dateline and in my mind that counts as jury duty, I think he accidentally unalived her and then was like, "Well, who am I to miss a good opportunity?" So, he has an accidental unaliving um and then he was just like, "Hmm, okay." Um I owed her money, now I don't have to pay it and I'm in debt and now because, you know, we're married, I get all her stuff. So this is gonna work out just fine for me. I think he's an opportunist scumbag, not an unaliving scumbag, or at least not an intentionally unaliving scumbag. Maybe he had murder in his heart and he was like, if I accidentally murder her, then I what you gonna do with me? Apparently what they gonna do with you down in Georgia, I think it was Georgia, is they gonna send you behind to prison for life without the possibility of parole. So 
I speculate. Now look, I am not a prophet. I am not in the biz in the business of like predicting and defining and whatever. Divining, not defining. But I think what's gonna happen is he's gonna still be convicted but of a lesser charge, and maybe he'll just get time served or a few more years or whatever. But in a couple years, he'll be out here playing golf with the rest of y'all. Not with me, because personally, I don't play golf on a livers, but that's just like a little standard that I have set for myself. You do what you want to do. I mean, how, who you play golf with is your business. And by golf, I I mean, putt, putt, because I'm not trying to be out there on all them green fields, walking, carrying stuff. Drive. I do like driving a little golf cart. Oh, I like driving a golf cart. But then you don't go that far, and then you're just sitting there waiting for somebody to hit a ball in a hole. It's boring to me. Anyway, silly Sonia the side chick. Child, so many S's in this story. Miss Shirley Strawberry, <coughs> excuse me, the sidekick of the Steve Harvey Morning Show, got a husband who was in prison, in jail. That jail husband got a side chick. Now listen, everybody would have ignored the side chick because we did not care. But this side chick, silly Sonya Child, she's out here doing the most. And so one of the things she said was, I was shocked. She went on Tasha K, the gossip legend Tasha K. Tasha K is the Rhoda Barrett. You old if you know who Rona Barrett is, but that's okay. I'm old too. Tasha K is the Rona Barrett of the 2000s, right? So she goes on Tasha and she's like telling some story about whatever. And she casually references the fact that she was shot three times. Wait, what? You, um, I've heard of like a hooker with a heart of gold. You a hooker with a bullet wound? Hmm. Curious. So anyway, people was like, you know, she a line sack of sugar because this girl lie about everything. So, uh, silly Sonia used to live in Ohio. Well, one of our intrepid gossip friends down there in Ohio was like, oh, well, just, I got the internet and a library card. Let me go over here and pull this police report. There was no police report because the shootation happened back in like, I think it was December 18th, 1991. That's a long time ago. That's pre-internet. But Chad, you know what was around? Microfiche. Uh, somebody was down at the library in the microfiche room. Like mm, some of y'all don't even know what a microfiche is, but some of you do. But they was like, oh, let me find, let me figure. I so the um the news story got pulled up. Turns out it was a domestic situation, and this is what happened. Silly Sonia, 20 was like 22, 23 years old, right? Was dating this dude who was reckless, obviously, and crazy. And so Sonia was sharing an apartment with her younger sister, and then her other sister was living downstairs. Okay, so Sonia's boyfriend comes over some ungodly hour of the night, like midnight or whatever, child, an hour when I would have been asleep for many hours. Although when I was 23, I was probably out there shaking my booty at midnight or just getting ready to go out to the club because that's how I used to get down. It's only these days that I go to bed at 8.15. Anyway, so um, silly Sonia is in her room getting ready to do whatever, whatever. The boyfriend comes over. They get into an argument. He pulls out a gun, boom, 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 and uh, pow pows her up three times. In the arm, in the abdomen, in someplace else. I forget her back. I forget wherever. Shot her three times. And then her sister was like, what is going on? And then her sister seen her running down the hall going, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. She gets shot in the face. And then the sister's boyfriend is like, what is going on? And he comes in. I guess he was hiding in a closet. Child, this news article had all of the details. And I was perched, watching, observing every little thing. So... The boyfriend is hiding in a closet, waiting for his opportunity. He leaps out of the closet, jumps on the dude with the gun, and knocks the gun out of his hand. The gun goes flying, but <clears throat> the would-be on the liver is like, oh, I was a Boy Scout. I came fully prepared. So he reaches in his pants and pulls out yet another gun. Oh, my goodness. And in the wrestling for the gun, the boyfriend gets shot three times. Boom, boom, boom. And then the attempted on the liver gets shot and becomes officially on alive himself. The drama. And so all of the shooties go to the hospital and apparently they all survived. There was a one month old baby in the house at the time this happened and the baby was unharmed. Can you imagine the trauma, the despair, the oh my God. And then since then, that happened 30 years ago. So that means that baby is a grown behind man. That happened many years ago. Sonia is this much older, but seemingly not much wiser girl. Why are you still getting with jailbirds and pimps? Now, listen, I understand this particular uh, gentleman, this particular male individual that you're dealing with, you have strong feelings for, but it seems like your taste in men has not evolved much. I mean, gratefully, you've moved on from that wretched unaliver, but um, 
this dude is currently accused of buggery. That's doing nasty things with animals. And being a pedialyte, that's doing nasty things with kids. And the uh, intimate assault, that's just like taking it against somebody's will. Now, he was on a jail phone call last night talking about, nah, nah, nah. Women be throwing their kittens at me, so I don't even really have to. Nah, how they go say that I was stealing kittens when I was, people was willingly giving me their kittens and their cats and their cougars and their everything else. Uh-uh, that's not me. Child, that jail phone call last night, he was ranting and raving like a lunatic. His BFF, who was down for him and is like, I'm with you till the wheels fall off, was just like, mm-hmm. 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 Seems like 16 months, 18 months, a long time after this boy got arrested, his family is not calling him back. That estranged wife is in the wind. His lawyer is trash, apparently, according to him. Child, I don't know. And the lawyer... <laughs> Now, he did clown his lawyer. He got up there and he's like, this dude got no money. I'm watching him on a Zoom call. He got all that brown furniture in the background and a big TV, like a big raggedy TV and ratchet and a ratchet looking refrigerator. Oh. Meanwhile, the lawyer's on the phone like, give me some more money. Give me some more money. Meanwhile, this whole story would have been kept on the low, on the hush hush, had the lawyer not accidentally slipped up and mentioned Miss Shirley Strawberry's name. Dang. Dude, you going down. Your entire situation is raggedy. And uh, Mr. Ernesto is concerned that he might end up doing life. He probably right, because that's the direction this case is going in. It's not looking good. And his BFF, Dre, ooh, we love us some Dre. Dre is a big old dude who's like, look, I'm going to get you some Zuzus and some Wham Whams. Now, look, I never heard of a Zuzu and Wham Wham. Other people were like, oh, yeah, that's just a term for snacks. Really? A Zuzu and a Wham Wham. Okay. Zuzu's wham whams and soups. I'm going to get you some cakes and pies and Zuzu's wham whams and soups. Um, I, so look, I speak Ebonics, but I was not aware of that. I need to update my urban dictionary. So my personal urban dictionary, so I could just write that down. Kids, y'all hungry? Y'all want some Zuzu's wham whams and soups? I ain't know nothing about that Zuzu life. But okay, so now I know. Look, I need to get on with the rest of my day. I have meetings today. It's year end today. I have a big phone call I have to deal with today. It's a lot going on. You know what? I, oh, wait, wait, wait. I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video. But if you feel so moved, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the algorithm. I'm trying to, like, grow the channel, but not too much because I be getting busy. And sometimes I don't have time to deal with all of this. But, um... For when I do have time, I'm so glad we've had this time together. Child, I sound like Carol Burnett. How have I used like five 70s references in this one video alone? I'm old, but it, you get what you get and you don't get upset. All right, y'all have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.